Did you know that Focal makes pro monitors? Yeah, you know them first as an audiophile speaker company. But this model that I'm going to review today, the Focal Alpha 65 Evo, is a pro model. And uh, meaning it's an active speaker, actually a bi-amplified speaker. And uh, well, I'm doing this because a couple of weeks ago I reviewed the Genelec G3, which is a pro monitor. And uh, it made me hungry for more. So here we are today looking at the 65 Evo. And well, let's run down some of the details. Oh, before I do that, I just want to mention that I started to watch the Beatles documentary on Disney Plus, Get Back. It's about the making of Get Back slash Let It Be. It's almost nine hours long. I think that's what it is. And I've only watched the first episode, which is about three hours long. And man, oh man, it takes you deep inside the process of the Beatles at work making an album, writing songs, working through the arrangements, the harmonies and stuff. It's really fascinating. A lot of people say that the first episode of the three-part series is kind of boring. I didn't think so. I didn't think so at all. I mean, I felt like this is what I've been waiting for my whole life is to see the Beatles actually writing music and creating music. So sorry it's taken a half a century to get here, but I'm in. And I'll tell you about the part two and part three when I finish this whole thing. But I just want to mention that I'm in it. And if you're a Beatles fan and you somehow miss that this is happening right now, you should check it out. Subscribe for a month to Disney Plus and then you can unsubscribe, which is what I plan on doing, by the way. The 65 Evo is a bi-amplified design with Class D amplifiers, a 55 watt amp on the six and a half inch slate fiber mid woofer, and a 30 watt amp on the inverted aluminum dome tweeter. And inverted means it goes in instead of bulging out. It's an innie, not an outie tweeter. And that tweeter is set into a mild waveguide. Now it's a ported design. The port's in the front, so yeah, you can jam it near a wall, but you know what I'm going to say. It, speakers almost always sound better pulled out from the wall at least six inches, hopefully a foot or so, to get their best. Port in the front, port in the rear, you still should pull the speaker out from the wall. Now speaking of the back side of the speaker, it has three inputs. An RCA input, an XLR input, and a quarter inch TRS phone jack input because it is a pro speaker so it offers those uh, configurations. Now also back there are tone controls, a bass control or low frequency control and a treble control and I'll give you a close up of what those look like and they're very effective. I use them uh, throughout the review although I mostly listen flat but I did want to get a feel of what those tone controls can do and I found them very very useful especially when playing really bright recordings which so many are. The cabinet by the way is interesting because it's MDF and the top and the back are black vinyl but the sides are molded plastic with these cool cutouts on the sides. It looks, it's a very nice looking design, but I, I found the appearance uh, very pleasing. And by the way, it does come with grills that separately cover the woofer and tweeter. The price, by the way, the price is $449 each. They're not sold in pairs, they're sold individually. $449 each. And there's also, for those who want something a bit smaller, a little more room friendly perhaps, there is the 50 Evo and that one is $349 each and that one has a five inch slate fiber woofer. Like all Focal speakers, it is designed in France, but it is made, surprisingly, in China. It does come with a two year warranty. It doesn't, oh, by the way, like a lot of pro uh, active speakers, it does not have a volume control, meaning you need to use the Evo, the 65 Evo with either a preamplifier or a source that has a volume control. There will be, I, I don't want to leave you guys hanging, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day at the conclusion of today's show. The first piece of music that I played on the 65 Evo was Bob Marley in dub volume one. I just wanted to get a feel for what this speaker could do in terms of low end gusto. And it does have a significant amount of gusto for a relatively small speaker. And better yet, the, the bass definition coupled to the power of the speaker was very impressive, again, for its size. If you're really into room shaking bass, you're gonna need a subwoofer, but that's true for pretty much all small stand mount speakers. 
and it can play loud. Now, they say it can play as loud as 104 dB. I will put up the complete specs right here. They say the maximum sound pressure level is 104 dB. I did not go anywhere near that loud. I was playing it for brief periods in the mid 90s, and that was plenty loud for me. I, to tell you the truth, as much as they say it can play really loud, I thought it sounded better at more moderately loud volume levels, meaning mid 80s to low 90s. That's where I felt most comfortable listening to this speaker. To, to more fully exercise the 65 Evo, I popped on this live Led Zeppelin and played a whole lot of love, pretty freaking loud. And yeah, you know what? Yeah, I had to turn down the treble. I definitely use those tone controls. And I actually use them a lot because if you play less than stellar recordings, this is a recording studio monitor speaker. It doesn't smooth over the harshness in recordings. And this recording, it's not that great, even though it was DVD audio, DVD audio in supposedly high resolution. I felt that the top end was rather fatiguing, even over the course of just listening to this one song, a uh, whole lot of love. So yeah, tone controls are nice. I definitely appreciate them. So then I played this Yola Tango record, which is a really gorgeous recording, just beautiful. It's delightful, actually. And just the keyboards and the weird guitar parts and everything, it seemed very 3D. It had a lot of soundstage layering going on. It's a really gorgeous recording. Um, and I had the tone controls set flat for, for Yola Tango. So, you know, if you're into diddling with the, phone, the tone controls, be my guest, or you just find the place, the happy place where you just want to leave them and forget about it, that works too. But it's nice to have them. That's for sure. These speakers are, these are monitor speakers. They sound like monitor speakers. If you, if you want a speaker that's gonna make everything sound nice or good or pleasant, that may be not the right one for you. No, this is a, this is a truth teller and you gotta live with that, right? So if, it's, if they're good, they're good. If the recordings are good, they're good. And if they're not so good, you're gonna hear that they're not the best. So luckily I still have the Genelec G3 uh, speakers here. Those are also active pro sound speakers. And sure, I had to do a comparison. I felt obligated to, but there's a couple of uh, ifs, ands, or buts. First, the Genelex are about double the price. They are $795 each. And they're also much smaller speakers. I'll show you a picture here of them next to each other. Yeah, so it wasn't really a fair contest, but that's what I had in terms of another active speaker for a comparison, so that's what I used. Now the Genelec is, to come right out and say it, the Genelec is a more refined, <laughs> well, it's, I, I'm about to say it sounds more like an audiophile speaker, but it's not, it's a pro monitor speaker, but it does have a sweetness to it, a refinement to it, a transparency to it that is definitely ahead of the 65 Evo. There's no doubt about that. So yeah, vocals sounded so much more complete, more composed, more fully formed as human beings seeing in my room over the G3 than they did over the 65 Evo. But remember, the G3 is $795 each, and this speaker, the 65 Evo, is $449 each. So they're not really, the, they're not really competing against each other directly. But that's what I heard. And I just, as I went on comparing these speakers, yes, the 65 Evo being the much larger speakers, its bass goes deeper. It's definitely a more potent sounding speaker. But I kept circling back to the G3 thinking, it's just a nicer sounding speaker. So it's kind of awkward to, to do this comparison because it's not really a fair comparison for the size and price differences between the two. But that's what I kept hearing. I kept coming back to the G3 and thinking, just there's a delicacy to the sound that when I return to the 65 Evo, it's a little harsher, a little rougher sounding. Damn, I wish I could say it and it used different words, but that's how it struck me, you know? So that's what was going down. So now it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think? And to sum it up, I think it's one hell of a bargain that for $900 a pair, $449 each, uh, this, you get a lot. You get a lot of speaker for the money. Uh, it's very powerful. The bass, as I said, is extraordinary for its size. Um, and if you want that neutral, 
uh, studio monitor type sound, which is not really the same thing as audiophile sound, this is definitely worth checking into. I mean, I think the G3 is also worth checking into, but it's a lot more money. It's interesting how even companies that make pro sound speakers, they have different flavors to them. So even there's, they're both shooting for accuracy and neutrality, they wind up sounding more different than you might expect. So anyway, yeah, I think the 65 Evo is a great deal. I think there's a, there's a lot going on there for the money. And now, speaking a lot, it's now time, <laughs> speaking for a lot for your money, it is now time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Steve sent this one in, and uh, he sent a really beautiful letter to accompany these pictures. He talked about having pain issues and having surgery and recovering from surgery, and he treated himself to a really first-class system with carry monoblock amplifiers, a pair of RHEL T9X subwoofers, Magnapan 3.7i speakers, I used to have those, uh, Musical Fidelity M8, and also a Cambridge streamer. Now, Steve says he doesn't have a trained ear, but he just enjoys sitting down and listening to the music. And that is really what this is all about. Thanks, Steve. We are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This continues to be the Audiophiliac Show. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel and give me a thumbs up, give me a like when you feel I deserve it. The other thing you might be interested, you just might be, are you the curious type? Okay, if you are and you have yet, if you have yet to do this, please check out my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And there is definitely a link to my Patreon in the description below this video. And now, I can, oh, and one other thing, you can subscribe to my Patreon in dollars, pounds, and euros. Yeah, and now I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.